Long before the Archie Sonic comic would adapt our way past coolest hogs, most iconic counterparts, the world of Mobius was introduced to Evil Sonic. This fella hailed from the reverse Mobius, a world where the good were bad and the bad were good. And what screams bad guy more than a black jacket, boots, and some shades, baby? Results? Varied? Evil Sonic is exactly what he appears to be, a punk looking for trouble, often a lackey or punchline in his own low-stakes schemes. No one respects him, he gets one-shotted by Antoine, and most importantly, by the time he appeared as the pseudo-protagonist of the comic's 150th milestone issue, I barely even registered his presence as a character anymore. This guy's grand plan is to use Sonic's good name to hit on all the girls in town, something so stupid that it should be at least somewhat funny, but instead is just boring because everything from the writing to the art was played so straight. Evil Sonic just lacked enough charisma to make his very basic concepts stand out from the comic's usual writing quirks. Like sure, he may want to grab the booty, but Sonic is out here telling Shadow to get laid, so who's the real edge hog here? In the end, Evil Sonic became a gag that had more than run its course, and so when a new creative team came on board, I was more than ready to say sayonara, simp, to this waste of space. But then, it happens. Something changes. Evil Sonic goes green. Hey losers, Scourge here. You're probably wondering why I'm laying here looking up at you like this. Well, it's because I got a problem with my way past hairiest bod. I've got stubble on my face. Too much of it. Which is why this video was sponsored by Manscaped. More than 10 million hogs, Mobius wide are using Manscaped's trimmers, hygiene and shower formulations, and premium boxers. Today they sent over the handyman for me to try out. This sleek, compact, waterproof trimmer is great for an everyday cleanup and trips. Getting 60 minutes of runtime on a single charge and taking up next to no space in your bags. On top of that, it's got skin safe technology to help you avoid nicks and cuts as you tackle up to three days of growth. So whether you're busy rolling into a ball, looking after your balls, or need to look after your face, look no further than Manscaped. Get 20% off free international shipping and two free gifts with my code at manscaped.com. Sayonara, simps. Till next time. Uh, hello? Hey, uh, what's up? This prick just ran an ad on my video. I'm gonna need some backup. Let's do some jam. Sonic the Hedgehog? Shadow the Hedgehog? Whatever. Who cares? Because the new hotness is a real scourge. <laughs> Scourge the Hedgehog, a name and a character that is every bit as silly yet weirdly awesome as he sounds. A walking, talking Sonic recolor with a backstory that feels like something ripped straight out of a forgotten Sonic fanfic. After all, having caught the eye of the number one hottest female Sonic character, Evil Sonic would steal the power of the Master Emerald for his 17th birthday, turning him into a permanent halfway super form and giving him cool sharp teeth, a cool attitude, and an even cooler name, Scourge the Hedgehog. <laughs> Leave it to Patrick Spaziante, one of the first Sonic fans to work on the comic, to design the greatest Sonic clone of all. The sharp teeth, the red Sega branded sunglasses, and that perfect emerald green fur with the sick twin scars on his chest. Scourge's design is immaculate, and makes it crystal clear that this guy is going to get as much love, attention, and personality as any of those precious game characters through these in-your-face poses and expressions. Not because he deserves it, but because he demands it. Scourge just has the gall. The gall to push Sonic to the side. The gall to steal his girlfriend and endlessly roast him for it. And the gall to make me enjoy it. Because, I mean, is Scourge really that different now from Evil Sonic? Nope. He's still getting in over his head and freaking out. He's still being ridiculously petty, like when his birthday present for himself is just to flex on Sonic and Shadow. Or when he gets knocked down yet still manages to catch his precious crown. He's still saying things like babe or wuss, and he's still got his dumb jacket. But now, that jacket has, and is, flames! Because while Evil S was just a bad boy Sonic, Scourge is THE bad boy Sonic, BITCH! What's the matter, big man? We play too rough? Nice powers, kid. Use them to get a less stupid haircut. No rotor, princess? Your team isn't the same level of lame without him. I, he, wow, how could Sonic resist a wit like that? <laughs> yeah, you run away. Can't nobody take down King Scourge. You tell him, baby. Sweet, it's good to be back. And it sounds like there's a fight going on? Fucking traitors! 
And it's not just the Fiona thing or that I'm better looking. It's that all it would take is one bad day and you'd be just like me. So yeah, not only is Scourge a Sonic knockoff, he's a Joker knockoff too. But Sonic's response here and the comic's consistent response to Scourge's antics is what allows this inclusion to be so fun instead of frustrating. No, that's not it, Scourge. It's because all it would take is a bit of selflessness, a little bit of decency, and you'd be just like me. To Sonic, the truly hateable thing about Scourge is that he's an embarrassment. I mean, this is his opposite? Please, how silly. The inverse of the hero of Mobius is just some chump, a bully from a world full of bullies. In a way, Scourge starts to feel like the underdog of his own story, which makes me kind of root for him a little as he consistently tries to ruin Sonic's day, doing his best to steal the spotlight whenever he can. Knuckles is being possessed and the world is about to end so now we need to work together to stop him. Welcome back, old man. What do you want said in your eulogy? Our heroes are taking it easy after they just fought a war. I wanted to see my girlfriend again. I love how she plays it like you two are for real. And after back-to-back -back life or death scenarios, after so many radical changes to the lives of our heroes, well, they are literally right in the middle of trying to tear down the defenses of their greatest enemy to prepare to defeat Dr. Robotnik once and for all. Well, Sonic is called back home. Something's going down. Heads up to any jerks present, the hedgehog is in the house. Attention to all the scrubs of this zone. The king has arrived. Respect. That's right, losers. It's King Scourge, the man with the plan so great Eggman wishes he thought of it. King Scourge is here to steal Sonic's childhood clubhouse. <laughs> and yes, he did just stand behind a portal for 10 minutes waiting for Sonic to show up. I'm king now. You kneel to me, and I don't need to deal with another one of you. Ah, fuck! I'll let you know when I'm ready to conquer your parts of the planet, Eggman. Then again, why pass up one uppity hedgehog for another? Ah, yo, Scourge, miss me? No! Ah, my guy just can't catch a break. This was supposed to be his arc, his grand comeback, and hog almighty, why isn't it happening? But worst of all for my poor pathetic boy is that real world time has passed. Sonic has finally faced many of his most famous hedgehog foes in both the games and the comics. And so naturally, Shadow shows up to steal some of the spotlights, and then Metal Sonic. Oh, and Amy's here too, of course, along with her evil classic counterpart, and hey, is that Robbo the Hedge? And enough! My name is Silver the Hedgehog. I've journeyed from the future to find this Sonic and destroy him. He, he is. is. You coward. Okay, it's a technicality, but still. This issue is genuinely hysterical, thanks to the never-ending onslaught of character-based comedy. It's stuff like Shadow's first words when seeing Scourge being, why does he have a crown? Like it offends him or something. <laughs> It's how delightfully absurd the stupid page with all the hogs overlapping conversations is. It's how Silver the Hedgehog's first appearance in Archie Sonic is just here so that the comic can spite Scourge and make him feel less and less significant to his own story arc. When Sonic the Hedgehog, but he's also Robin Hood, is getting more focus, you know it's intentional. <laughs> In the end, Scourge's desperate plight to insert himself as the main antagonist of the comic, to be someone who rivals Sonic and surpasses him, an all-powerful king, it just gives this whole arc such a fun energy. And the value of that can't be understated. It genuinely made me laugh out loud on multiple occasions, and eventually, it even got me thinking. Because, oddly enough, during one of their many scuffles, Scourge reaches out to Sonic. You're full of untapped potential. Conquer the stupid little planet. Then we can rock the entire multiverse. Twin unstoppable kings. But wait, why would this character, who is so focused on himself and what makes him great, even entertain the idea of joining forces or sharing any of the glory with the person he hates? Well, that's where we get one of Scourge's best stories. Father and son. Here, Scourge breaks into Sonic's home for a late night surprise pummeling, but unexpectedly, someone else is there to greet him. Sonic's father, Jules. So the showboating loser tries to intimidate Sonic's dad, poking and prodding at him to get a reaction, surrounded by these hypnotic red swirls. He monologues to Jules about his successes, about how far he went to conquer his planet, and how while Sonic's father may be a robot, Scourge's father simply isn't, as a red something oozes behind him. But Jules is unfazed, and Scourge's hypnotic aura dissipates with a wave of his hand. No amount of self-aggrandizing is going to convince Jules that Scourge is anything but a coward, someone who takes the easy way out, using violence to make themselves seem big. Ultimately, Jules sticks to the conviction he expressed at the start of the story. I almost died saving my son once. So Jules wants Scourge to know he won't go down without a fight, a fight that he knows he has no chance of winning, but one he faces with zero hesitation. However, Scourge tries one last time to control the situation, the panel malformed around him. 
Still though, Jewel stands and the panel snaps into place again, consuming the lies Scourge tells himself, as he says, I am not your father. I was in the front lines of the Great War. I won't go down quietly. And while you may not care about the loss of your jewels, I'm certain my son will be very upset. Do you want that on your head too? Just a bunch of empty words. You're no different from my old man after all. This interaction is simply brilliant. I've memed on Scourge this entire video, but before this scene, before all the other hogs arrived, Scourge does have a presence to him. Even if you can laugh at the guy, there's a confidence to Scourge that is sometimes every bit as charismatic as his true blue counterpart. After seeing Scourge reappear over and over, seeing how much love his panels get through the art, how big he feels, I almost started to buy into the hype. Maybe Scourge is a worthy rival to Sonic. He can certainly keep up with him, and we eventually see that Scourge did take over his world. We find out that while his old gang actually hates him, he beat them into submission. And then he even ripped out Evil Antoine's eye as part of the convincing. We see what was once a fun sort of villain dynamic with his girlfriend morph into threats of violence. And in this story, we find out that Scourge murdered his own father. And so, when Scourge leaves crying and writes off this entire conversation as nothing but empty words, it leaves the reader with so much to consider. Scourge isn't just some cool, goofy meathead. No, every one of his actions is filtered through a need to validate his existence. A need for others to validate his existence. Even if it's mostly through fear, anger, or violence, through the only way he's been able to define and accept himself from the very start. After all, Scourge's only moments of vulnerability that we've seen, the moments he shows genuine uncertainty or fear, is when his opponent refuses to play his game, refuses to let him control the narrative, refuses to see him as anything other than the worthless nobody he fears he is. Scourge is someone who may even feel some guilt over what he did to his dad. Someone who is genuinely hurt by the idea that a father could love their son as much as Jules does his Sonic. But no matter what, Scourge is never portrayed as a character who we should feel sympathy for. His father is never mentioned again. His actions are never justified. After all, many of these tears are clearly only for himself. A result of the overwhelming self-loathing that he feels. Ashamed he was made to feel so weak when he deserves to be feared, to be respected. Because because Scourge isn't just aimlessly lashing out. No, Scourge is a powerful, vindictive maniac. Someone who has plans in place if he's ever made to feel weak again. A throne stocked with Anarchy Barrel. Anarchy Barrel? Oh no. Chaos Emeralds! All hail the king, baby! What I love most about Super Scourge's design is the eyes. He feels demonic hovering over every Sonic rival in Reskin who's tried to steal his glory. That subtle, darker, vicious side of himself now at the forefront. He's the closest to true royalty he's ever been, his fur even being the color of royalty now. And yet, despite the genuine threat he presents our heroes, Scourge is still throwing out one-liners, he's still playing around, and even after he finally gets serious, he's still begging for attention. What is it with you? I gave you your chance. We could have ruled the multiverse together. But no, you decided to go the holier-than-thou route. See where that got you? You know what? Forget ruling Moebis or Mobius. I'm Super Scourge. I'll spin dash both planets in half because I can. And then I'll just keep stomping on planets until I find one that gives me the respect I deserve. Hey, I'm talking to you. Ever since Scourge became, well, Scourge, he's prided himself on being more than just a dark mirror to Sonic. Originally, he thought he had accomplished that through his new look and his new name, but soon found that these were only superficial. When he returns, he's bragging about how he's finally accomplished something. He's earned the title of a conqueror, a king, and now a god. And he got that his way, not Sonic's. This is what makes him stand out, right? Yet in the end, Sonic defeats Scourge not by needing to rise up to meet his rival, but by simply challenging the idea that Scourge was ever one in the first place. I've been more than a match for you since day one. I can finish you, super or not. Prove it, tough guy. And so, in another of endless attempts to prove his worth, Scourge is humbled. With a little thinking and a leap of faith, Sonic's theory is proven true. That a super form with no downsides like his own must come with some cost for his corrupted counterpart. And all it took was a basic insult. After that, Scourge's insecurities that have always guided him took care of the rest. So as he clings to the titles and labels he's desperately grafted onto himself, Sonic destroys the symbol that embodies them. Scourge's anger is treated once again as the temper tantrum it's always been. And the look on his face, fear, shock, and maybe even a little embarrassment, a little self-awareness as he's reminded, you're a bully, that's it, is just perfect. 
In the end, Scourge's story is about a sonic recolor desperately trying to justify his own existence. Yet by constantly redefining himself in response to Sonic, he continues to revolve around him, being defeated by that never-ending need for validation. Unlike all of Sonic's other rivals, Scourge is never able to define himself. At best, he just leans into the evil of his original name. Even after a prison break and a quill cut, Scourge's first thought is how he's gonna ruin Sonic's day. He'll never learn. Which is… unfortunate. Because despite what he thinks, Scourge has been an individual since the very beginning. He's always been different from Sonic, he's always stood out, because Scourge the Hedgehog has always been a bully, and he's always been a punk, and he's always been a LOSER! GET DUNKED ON, NERD!